Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice Diophantine equation. We have x to the power y equals x plus y. x and y are integers, which makes this a Diophantine equation. Diophantine equations were you know, studied by many uh, mathematicians, including Diophantus. Obviously, there's uh, an interesting story about how, how long he lived, so on and so forth. But anyways, so basically, we're looking for integer solutions. So in some cases, there are no solutions. Sometimes there are infinitely many solutions, and sometimes there are finitely many solutions. And requires a lot of uh, technical approaches. And I made a video about the different types of Diophantine equations, a lecture video. You can go ahead and check it out. So let's see how we can approach a problem like this. Now, to be able to solve x to the power y equals x plus y, where x and y are integers, we need to consider a lot of things. For, for example, uh, we can start with some specific values. And those trivial values will kind of give us an idea, but that's not the whole picture. Obviously, when you look at the graph, it'll make more sense. And I'm going to show you the graph towards the end so that it'll make more sense. So we're going to see some interesting stuff. Let's get started. So to be able to solve it for particular cases first, I'm going to test some values. And you should do the same whenever you see a Diophantine equation. Test some values like x equals 1, x equals 0, y equals 0, things like that. Or you could even do something like replace y with x, replace y with negative x, and see if you can arrive at something interesting. Maybe you'll come up with a pattern. Maybe you'll just find no solutions. And, you know, uh, you never know. So... Let's start with y equals 0. Okay. And the reason why I start with y equals 0 is because y is in the exponent. As you know, when you raise any number to the power 0, you get 1. Wait a minute. Is that true for 0 as well? Yes. I know a lot of people are going to object to this and they're going to say, no, 0 to the power 0 is undefined. It's 0, whatever, blah, blah, blah. No. 0 to the power 0 is 1. It's been proven. And even though some people still say, there's no agreement, and too bad. I mean, they should agree to, the, to this. Anyways, I made a video. You can go out and check it out. It's also in the description down below. So if y is equal to 0, we get x to the power 0 equals x plus 0. As you know, x to the power 0 is 1. 1 equals x plus 0, which is x. Nice. We arrived at a really nice solution. Even though it's trivial, it's worth checking because sometimes you may not get any solutions, which you'll probably see in a little bit. So y equals 0 implies x equals 1, which means 1 comma 0 is a solution ordered pair. Of course, we have to find two values. And that's the beauty of the Diophantine equation. Look at this. You have a single equation, but you have two variables, and you have to solve for both of these variables. That's what makes them awesome. Now, this couldn't, be, uh, this couldn't work with real numbers. Of course, we have to look for integers most of the time. So, y equals 0 gave us x equals 1. Good, good. Let's continue. With y, how about that? I mean, y equals 1 would probably be a good choice, don't you think? y equals 1 is going to give us the following. x to the power 1 equals x plus 1. This is pretty interesting. You know why? Because this gives us x equals x plus 1. This is not even true for complex values. No solution whatsoever. So, you're totally going to reject it. Because a number cannot be one more than the same number. Otherwise, a bunch of infinitely many numbers would be the same. Which is not the case, right? Okay. So, y equals 1 didn't give us anything. Which means y cannot be 1. But that's okay. Don't worry about it. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is maybe try y equals negative 1. Because that looks like a good choice. And obviously, I'm not going to do this for infinitely many values. Because I can then try, try uh, y equals 2, y equals 3, whatever. We can do a couple just to get the feel for it. But y equals negative 1 gives us something interesting. x to the power of negative 1 equals x plus negative 1. And that just means x to the power of negative 1, as you know, is 1 over x. And that's equal to x minus 1. Beautiful. This gives us a quadratic equation. Yay. And that is x squared minus x equals 1. Or x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. Nah, I kind of smell the golden ratio here. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is 5, divided by 2. Awesome. So y equals negative 1 gives us this, which means 
we have the one plus root five over two comma one as a solution. Wait a minute, is it, aren't x and y supposed to be integers? Yes, so these solutions do not count. Unfortunately, even though they're beautiful, they're great, they're awesome, they just won't count because we're looking for integers. But at least we tried, right? Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is maybe try y equals two because that's gonna give us something interesting, I think a, probably a cubic, and y equals two becomes x to the second power equals x plus two. Wait a minute, it didn't give us a cubic, it gave us a quadratic instead, which is nice. This might be a good thing, you know? x squared minus x minus two equals zero, and then from here we can factor it as x minus two times x plus one equals zero. Awesome. This gives us two solutions, x equals two, or x equals negative one. Along with y equals two, this kind of give us two comma two as an ordered pair and negative one comma two as an ordered or as another ordered pair. And since we already had one comma zero, we can also go ahead and bring it over here. So far, we got three solutions. Isn't that cool? Nice. Obviously, my next step is not gonna be y equals three because this can't go on forever. We kind of need to you know, settle down with something. But you can go ahead and test it out. If you do y equals three, that should give you x cubed equals x plus three, and then look for integer solutions. You're gonna realize there are no integer solutions to this because there aren't any. And as you continue, I'll show you something which will um, make sense because if x and y are large, then x to the power y is gonna be much, much greater than, that's what the symbol says, much, much greater than x plus y, so there's no way they can be equal. Okay, but you never tried negative values for y. Well, I did try negative one, but here's the thing. Can x be negative? Sure, why not? For example, what happens if x is equal to negative one? Let's just ex exhaust all trivial values, shall we? So this gives us negative one to the power y equals negative one plus y or y minus one. And this is kind of like a really weird scenario. You know why? If y is an integer, here's the thing. This can take two values. If y is even, so I can kind of write this as like a piecewise defined function. One, if y is even, and negative one, if y is odd. So we can kind of go off of two particular solutions. Suppose you, y is equal to 2n, n is an integer, so 2n is odd, even. Uh, you get uh, negative one to the power two n equals two n minus one, and that gives you one equals two n minus one. Guess what? Uh, this uh, negative one to raise to an even power is positive one. You know that, right? Hopefully, that's what we talked about. And from here, you get n equals one, okay? Which implies y equals two, okay? What about x? Well, x was negative one, so negative one comma two is another solution. Well, it's not another solution because we already have that. But again, we found it just differently. Maybe I shouldn't try x equals negative one because we already knew that, but you know what? Uh, x equals negative one could have given us a different y value maybe because we got negative one from y equals two, but that doesn't mean negative uh, one or y equals two is the only value that would give us x equals negative one. Does that make sense? We could have found different x values we didn't know. So anyways, um, I guess this is, probably good enough, and I'm gonna, next, I'm gonna do the following. Again, our equation is x to the y equals x plus y. Uh, now I wanna replace y with x, or just set y equal to x, because you know what? That, that could give us something good, I mean, from symmetry. And if that's the case, replace y with x, x to the x equals x plus x, which means x to the x equals two x. Okay, you may or may not know how this works, but divide both sides by x. Of course, x should not be zero, Wait a minute, can it be zero though? Let's, let's test it. If x is zero, zero to the power of zero is one, the left-hand side is one, but two x is equal to zero. It doesn't work, so zero is not a solution, but that's okay. Uh, we're just gonna divide both sides by x, and that's gonna give us uh, all the variables on the same side, which is good. Now, can we use a special function, Lambert's W function, to solve for it, this? No. I tried it, and I even used, trust me, um, AI tools, and I don't think there's any way to solve it besides numerical solutions. But you can guess and check, of course. For example, A, x equals 2 will work because 2 to the power 1 equals 2. Nice. Is there another value that works? 
So here's the question. This function, if you graph it, like think about uh, f of x equals x to the power x minus 1, when you graph it, it's going to look like something like this. Well, for x equals 0, that will be... No, I don't think it... No, no, never mind. 0 to the power negative 1 is undefined, so it's not going to intersect the y-axis. But I think it's going to look like a curve, not, not, not a parabola, but something like this, right? Okay. So when you set um, y equal to x, you're actually going to get... Wait a minute. Where did I get this from? From setting y equal to x, yes. So, sorry, this is the graph I meant, okay. So this is the graph of x to the power x minus 1. When you intersect this with y equals 2, notice that the horizontal line is going to intersect at two points. Now, one of them is 2, obviously. This is 2, comma 2. But there's another x value, which is between 0 and 2, which is a solution which you can find using a calculator like Wolfram Alpha. But that's a pretty interesting graph. I would recommend you to graph it using Desmos or something else and check the intersection point. You can use Desmos. And by the way, I just found out today that you can do a 3D graph with Desmos, which is something I'm going to use in one of my upcoming videos. And I think that is going to be tomorrow. No, actually Monday. Never mind. You're going to see the 3D graph over there. But anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. By the way, before we, you leave, here's the graph of x to the y equals x plus y. I just wanted to show you because something significant about this. Remember, y cannot be 1. y equals 1 gave us x equals x plus 1, which is impossible. So that means our graph will have some type of an asymptote. And notice the two points that I marked, 2, 2, and 1, 0. Why do we not see the negative solution here? Because for negative values, the exponential is going to go kind of crazy. So Desmos does a graph it. Okay? And until next time, make sure to check out A plus BI. And bye-bye.